Today we're going to do a video on a small SB uh, tri-tool clamshell. So what I'm going to show you today is when you're doing thin wall pipe or tube, uh, schedule 10, schedule 5, you have some ovality issues and to round up the pipe, we offer some full support pads. So a standard pad is a block like this, depending on the diameter of the pipe and adjustable pads screw and unscrew from the outside of the machine. So what we're gonna be doing is removing the pads. Once they're removed, we'll go ahead and talk about the full support pads. Uh, the full support pads will help your round in your ovality. Um, and sometimes you've got to look and you might have to get a one larger size machine than your pipe. So if you had eight inch pipe, you might have to use a 10 inch machine to use full support pads. So the larger one is a fixed pad. And normally we put that on the top because we're going to have our gearbox sitting on the top of the pipe. It can go on the bottom. If it was on a stand, the pipe would be cradled at the bottom. These bolt from the outside and it is a fixed pad. So we go ahead, once it's bolted in, and we're gonna tighten that up. The other two pads are adjustable, which will run up to the bottom of the pipe once we get it set on there. So one big difference with your running full support pads before besides that it's going to help round up pipe and will be self-centering because the footprint of this pad is so big it really self squares itself also which uh, besides on thin wall applications helps up helps speed up the process of setting it up even on regular standard wall We'll go ahead and draw these pads all the way up into the register pocket. So when we slide it over the tube, we have as much room as we can get. Okay. So you'll notice that even with the full support pads are in, you still have the split lines lined up. So this clamshell can be still split in half and go on the run of a pipe instead of just over the end of the pipe. So we just slid our pipe or machine over the pipe. If we did put it in line, you could split it in half with the four bolts, two headstock, two mainframe. We'll go ahead and tighten up our pads at the bottom. We're rocking it back and forth as we tighten it up, help square it. I always watch the gap with thin wall pipe in here just to make sure that I'm not pushing uh, the thin tube to one side versus the other. So just tighten evenly. And when we go to set our tooling in here, we can straight sever sever right hand bevel towards the machine or left hand, or we could sever and bevel both sides at the same time. There should always be a sticker on the rotation direction of the machine, but if you're looking at the front of it, it turns clockwise, and you wanna make sure that your tool bits, the cutting edge is facing that direction. 
You can also look in the tool block slot and notice that the one side is in the center of the tool block and that's the direction of travel. and tighten all six set screws. Now, the next step is we wanna look for the highest location on the pipe or tube, and also be aware if you do have a seam, you wanna find that spot. So we're gonna find that highest spot. We're gonna use the star wheel wrench on the star wheel that actually feeds the machine in radially. Go down, touch that spot. We're gonna back it up and bring the tool bit away from the pipe three turns, just for safety so we don't run into anything with the ovality. We're gonna go ahead once we do pull it out and you wanna turn the star wheel in the opposite direction, feeding it back in and you'll time it so the tips are at three, six, and nine, and uh, 12. So basically that's putting the point along the sides of this tool block right here in line. And you want that tip of the star wheel to be lined up. So when it comes and hits that small tripper pin that it actually activates the star wheel. Next, we wanna take our bevel bit or trailing bit, whether you're sever beveling or straight severing and put it in the same location. This will be a trailing bit and you wanna have that a half a turn behind the trail or the leading bit. So we're gonna bring it back one, two, three, and then we'll take and a half and then take out the backlash and time that star wheel again. Because I mentioned earlier that these pads with full support, they have so much contact, they, they self square, but we'll wanna go ahead and double check our square. We could go ahead and install the air motor. And the air motor has a torque restraint bracket that's bolted on the back of the machine with two shoulder bolts and a squeeze bolt for the motor itself. And you could notice that it has multiple holes where you could choose the location of the motor if you had a radio clearance problem. Go ahead and tighten up that squeeze bolt. So drive wise available for a 604 through 612 SB clamshell is we can run it pneumatically, uh, hydraulically, electric 110, 220 or servo drive. You always want to go around your first rotation uh, slow when your tripper's in, and that helps time the star wheels in case you didn't have it just perfect.
Well, there we are. We just severed, beveled this piece of eight inch uh, tube with full support pads. Um, you probably noticed that at the end, it cut through one side a little bit later than the other. That's due to wall thickness uh, being indifferent from one side to another. 